Witches or priestesses, demons or healers, what exactly is a babaylan? And why were they fed to crocodiles? Mabuhay! Earn ka pampangan, luwid kayo! And binisaya, mabuhi! Welcome back to my channel! It's me, Kirby Aralio, your friendly Pinoy historian and culture bearer. And if you are new to my channel, in this channel, I make videos about our people's history, culture, and everything in between. So if you like any of those things, learning about any of these things, don't forget to like, share this video, comment down below, and please, please subscribe! And in today's video, we'll be digging deeper and learning more about the powerful Babaylans of pre-colonial Philippines. So without further ado, who exactly were the Babaylans? There are many ancient and pre-modern societies in which women have played an extensive role in religious affairs. For instance, in ancient Greece, the Hyriae were priestesses who played prominent roles in the temples and the cults of Greek deities, such as Athena, Artemis, and Hera. This role continued into Roman times, before the advent of Christianity. Similarly, in Japan, there is an ancient tradition of mikos, or shrine maidens, working as priestesses in Shinto shrines. Yet very few priestesses ever attended the level of societal power and prominence that the indigenous Babaylans did in pre-colonial Philippine societies. The Babaylans were community leaders with the ability to interact with the spirits from an indigenous point of view, including the spirits of the dead, nature, and the deities, aka the Anitos and the Diwatas. Although the term Babaylan is often translated into English as shaman, priestess, or medium, there is actually a great variety of their duties in the different parts of the Philippines. In fact, there are many different terms across the diverse Austronesian languages of the Philippines to refer to these spiritual leaders, such as Babaylan amongst the Visayans, Catalonan in Tagalog, Balian amongst the Lumad, Walian in pre-Islamic Maguindanao, Mumbaki in Ifugao, and many more. And in Kapampangan, we have two terms, Katulunan and Mamaluyan. And I'll share more about their differences later on in this video, so please keep watching. But anyway, it is important for us to remember that before the arrival of the Spaniards in the late 15th hundreds, there was no unified Philippines yet. So this phenomenon of Babaylans was widespread and dispersed among the many diverse indigenous ethnic groups of the islands. And although in certain societies there were also male priests or shamans, overall throughout the archipelago, women were in charge of these important aspects of our ancestors, spirituality, and society. And again, there are many terms to refer to these priestesses and healers depending on their ethnicity or language. But for the sake of consistency and to make it easier for everyone to follow, from this point on in this video, I will be using the most popular term Babaylan. And since there are many variations to their duties and roles in the different societies of our ancestors, today's video will be an introduction to the fascinating world of the Babaylans. And hopefully, this will inspire you to dig deeper. And speaking of digging deeper, if you want to support my channel and my research, please consider being my patron on Patreon or getting copies of any of my books, coloring books and ebooks, or any of the merch linked down below. In fact, the Babaylans are also part of my book and coloring book about the fierce women of early Southeast Asia. So don't miss out and order your copies today. Now, before we continue, as always, I'm providing my knowledge, my perspectives, and my research as a Filipino historian and a Kapampangan Tagalog culture bearer. So if there's anything that I missed or anything that you would like to add from your own roots, your own cultures and traditions from across the Philippines and across Southeast Asia, let us know in the comments down below. Because you know, many of these traditions are still very much alive to this very day. So let us all learn from one another. Now back to our fearless Babaylans. The Babaylans were a cast of priestesses who were extremely prominent within pre-colonial Philippine societies. The Babaylans performed many roles in these indigenous societies. Their sacred position emanates primarily from the belief that they could commune with the spirits of the dead and of mother nature. And this was harnessed by the Datus, aka the local rulers of our indigenous communities. For the most part, there was a very close relationship between the Datus and the Babaylans. The Babaylans were believed to have the supernatural abilities to communicate with the deities and with our departed ancestors, while the Datus on the other hand were validated in their positions by having the Babaylans acknowledge their right to rule. In other words, the power structure they inhabited was symbiotic. All of this begs the question as to what the average person believed a Babaylan could do. The Babaylans were deemed to have temporal powers which manifested in tangible ways amongst the people of our pre-colonial kingdoms. Most 
Most notably, they were believed to have major powers which allowed them to identify the source of illnesses and provide cures in response. This was somewhat similar to the healers found in other indigenous traditions such as those in Africa and Southeast Asia. The Babaylans would use divination rituals to establish what was causing a malady. They would use potions, magical rituals, and talismans to cure and excise the sickness from the afflicted person. But contrary to popular belief, not all of this was simply founded on superstition. And like many other folk and indigenous cultures, the Babaylans utilized herbs and other remedies which had substantial medicinal qualities. However, beyond these healing abilities, perhaps the foremost reason why the Babaylans were held in high esteem was because of their ability to commune with the spirit world. The Babaylans would engage in rituals to communicate with the spirit world, especially during important moments like when a family member died suddenly. Stimulants and animal sacrifices were often employed by the Babaylans during these rituals, in the course of which the spirit guides were considered essential in order to prevent the Babaylans from becoming lost in the spirit world. These spirit guides were variously referred to as Abyan and Bantai, roughly meaning friend and guardian. In Kapampangan culture, the Mamaluyan were believed to be the vessels of the gods. The root word itself, Baluyan, literally means a vessel. They were the sacred bodies that the gods possess when communicating with humans. The Katulunan, on the other hand, were those who communicated with the spirits and the deities through visions and dreams. The Kapampangan root word for Katulunan is Tulon, which means to present itself through visions. Another difference between the two according to our elders was that the Mamaluyan were female, while the Katulunan were usually male. But the male Katulunans were not the same as the transgender Bayugin, which we will be discussing later in this video. Anyway, Babaylans had several powers mainly serving as a medium and interacting with the spirits and the deities aka the Anitos and the Diwatas. They also lead in rituals relating to the weather, in healing the sick and the wounded, and taking care of pregnancies and childbirth. And they do all of this and many many more through their spiritual gifts, divine prowess, and medicinal abilities. They can even repel dark magic attacks against anybody in their community, while at the same time they can also inflict their own magical attacks against their enemies. The spirits, Anitos and Diwatas, were also believed to be capable of harming people with illnesses or misfortunes. But they can also be benevolent through veneration or worship. And facing these problems was mainly the task of the Babaylans, who were consulted to connect with the spirits and provide them with venerations and offerings. Overall, the Babaylans had great knowledge of natural remedies, creating potions for people's health and being recognized as healers. More importantly, they were the bridge between us and the spirits spiritual realms. The manner of choosing a Babaylan varied according to the community. Some were mentored by elder Babaylans while others were chosen by members of the community. Many if not all of them were chosen by going through spiritual manifestations such as trances or psychological experiences our ancestors considered magical. As a result of all of this, the Babaylans were amongst the highest members of pre-colonial society. They stood equally amongst the nobility and they ranked just below the data. Indeed, when a Datu was killed or otherwise incapacitated without a clear line of succession, the Babaylans often stepped in to become interim leaders. Moreover, because of their esteemed position, the Babaylans were often amongst the wealthiest citizens of these pre-colonial kingdoms. But wait, is it true that we had transgender Babaylans? That queer people were accepted, revered, and sacred? Let's find out. Not all Babaylans were women. There is significant evidence to indicate that some Babaylans were actually transgenders. They were known as the Asog in the Visayas or Bayuk and Bayugin in Luzon. They wholeheartedly carry out the mannerisms, clothing, and hairstyles of females within their cultures. In other words, they embraced and embodied indigenous femininity amongst the Babaylans. It shows us an important matriarchal role in the pre-colonial society that existed for several centuries, if not for thousands of years. People with feminine gender expressions were held with high esteem. They were considered women by the community and had the power to serve as babaylans. Essentially, they were full-fledged women carrying out the daily life of women along with their high position amongst the babaylans. In fact, they could even get married with men just like any other person. So yes, a form of what we would now call gay marriage was already practiced and widely accepted in pre-colonial Philippines. This phenomenon has been 
widely studied as an ancient expression of queerness and the fluidity of gender and sexuality with much acceptance and celebration in what is now the Philippines. This is also similar to other indigenous societies in the many islands of Southeast Asia. Like for example, the transgender priests known as the Bisu of the indigenous Bugis people of Sulawesi, just a day sail south of Sulu and Mindanao. And we can talk more about this in a future video. In fact, one of my next videos will be about the transgender Babaylans featuring the Tamblot Revolt in Bohol, an uprising against the Spaniards and the Catholic missionaries in the early 1620s led by the fearless transgender Babaylan Tamblot. And in that video, we'll dig deeper into the Asog, the Bayugin, the Bisu, and many more. So make sure to click subscribe so you don't miss out. Today, queer people in the Philippines are known to give life and laughter to our people, and oftentimes to lift the spirits of our communities. Yet over and over again, they were also seen as objects of ridicule and humiliation. But back in the pre-colonial realities of our ancestors, they were seen as highly spiritual. They were empowered and respected at the pinnacle of our pre-colonial societies. They were beloved and highly revered and not seen as a curse. Ironically, our ancestors showed more inclusion and equality than our own modern-day society. So after this video, make sure to watch my other video about gender and sexuality in pre-colonial Philippines. So what exactly happened to our Babaylans when the conquistadors came? Did they simply disappear? The decline of the Babaylans began with the arrival of other religions, mainly Catholicism brought by the Spaniards, but also in the south with the spread of Islam. The first Catholic Mass in the Philippines was held in 1521, and by the end of the 1600s, Christianity had spread throughout much of the islands, except for Mindanao and the Sulu Archipelago. These indigenous beliefs were seen by both the Spaniards and the native converts as idolatry and witchcraft, thus violently punished and brutally persecuted. This was especially worse for the priestesses, whose role in society had now been relegated to the fringes. Women and trans people had lost their traditional positions in the hierarchy of Philippine society, thus putting an end to an age of gender equality and replacing it with the oppressive patriarchy and the gender binary brought by the colonizers. But unknown to many, the Babaylans did not quickly disappear from Filipino society following the arrival of the Spaniards. Indeed, they were central figures to the resistance against colonialism, such as the epic Tamblot Revolt of Bohol. So stay tuned for that video coming soon. Interestingly, as the Philippines became increasingly Christianized in the 1700s, elements of the pre-colonial Babaylan traditions, or what others call shamanism, were incorporated into Filipino Christianity. This involved the emergence of female Christian oracles across the Philippine archipelago throughout the 1800s and well into the 1900s. Thus, the Babaylans have continued to play a role in Filipino society and religious life down to the modern times. In fact, for the most part, the indigenous religions of the Philippines entered a process of syncretism with Catholicism, mixing several of its traditions and elements with those of Christianity. While those who wanted to continue practicing traditional religions and pre-colonial beliefs moved to remote and isolated areas in the interior of the islands where they were able to keep their practices in secret. However, women lost their leading role as the beloved spiritual leaders, a position that began to be dominated by men. And as mentioned between the 1500s and the 1700s, there were several uprisings with the aim of returning to the indigenous beliefs, aka the old religion. Unknown to most Filipinos, there are even instances of these uprisings in the 1800s through the 1900s, like the case of Papa Isho who led the Babaylans from the island of Negros to rise up against both the Spaniards and later against U.S. imperialism and occupation of the Philippines. Teka lang, Kuya Kirby. What about now? What about today? Do we even still have Babaylans today? And wait, is it true that they were fed to crocodiles? 
So with the passing of the centuries, the Philippines became a predominantly Christian nation. However, traditional religions and pre-colonial practices still exist to a lesser extent. Unknown to most Filipinos today, many are still practicing countless aspects of our indigenous beliefs to this very day, either as part of Filipino folk Catholicism or in their own independent way. Actually, if you look at the indigenous Kulitan script of the Kapampangans, for example, it never really died. It survived centuries of colonialism and was still used by Kapampangans on a daily basis. Although no longer seen in the mainstream society nor practiced by the majority, writing in Kulitan was never abandoned, especially among the oldest Mapiansugi clans. In fact, a huge factor on why it survived into our modern day was because a lot of our elders and culture bearers like our Mamaluyans and Katulunans who continued using it to communicate with the spirit world, to communicate and commune with our ancestors. But we can talk more about this in a future video. So let me know what you think in the comments below and stay tuned. Many Filipinos today are more familiar with the phenomena of being possessed by spirits, by good and evil spirits, known in Tagalog as Sinasapian or Sinasaniban, and in Kapampangan as Luluguran, or in Bisaya as Nasudlan. And in some cases, they were allegedly possessed by the spirits of the Christian saints, or even by Our Lady the Virgin Mary, or by Jesus himself. Though it may seem like a modern day paranormal superstition, this phenomenon has roots in the pre-colonial beliefs of our ancestors. In fact, even the albularios, the modern day practitioners of folk medicine, have roots from the Babaylans. But unfortunately, for the most part, practitioners of our indigenous beliefs are often seen as bad and evil. They are considered as witches and even antichrist for their beliefs. Now so far, I'm just talking about the modern day Christianized communities which make up the vast majority of the Philippines. However, we must also remember that many of our indigenous people, such as the Lumads of Mindanao, never really converted to Christianity nor Islam. Many of these indigenous communities continue to practice, preserve, and further develop the pre-colonial beliefs of our ancestors. So yes, Babaylans or Balyan as they are known amongst the Lumads never really disappeared. Indeed, even if we go back to the urbanized communities across the Philippines, we still have modern-day Babaylans who do not just practice our indigenous beliefs, but many are actively advocating for peace and justice in our communities. Many Babaylans today throughout our islands are courageously fighting injustices, such as the plundering of our natural resources, the desecration of mother nature, the exploitation of indigenous people, and against the bloody violation of our basic human rights. And for those of us in the diaspora, many are unaware that we have organizations and institutions like the Center for Babaylan Studies, our traditional concept of the Babaylan endures, which gives us a vision of what the role of women were in the ancient times. A time that for some could be considered archaic or backwards, but in reality, these were societies in which the equality of gender was pretty much the norm. And it is something that modern day Philippines still struggles with. Babaylans have been demonized for centuries. They were once the beloved spiritual leaders and healers at the pinnacle of our ancient society. But because of colonialism, they were vilified as evil witches and demons. They were hunted down and killed mercilessly. Many Babaylans were literally fed to the crocodiles. They did this because Babaylans embodied an enduring symbol of female and queer power, something that challenges the dominance of a white patriarchal society. And thus the Babaylans were a formidable force of resistance against the injustices of colonialism colonialism and imperialism in the Philippines. Therefore, the friars and conquistadors were eager to vilify the Babaylan as evil witches. They were determined to spread fear amongst our ancestors, while at the same time using this to justify the violence and genocide they had unleashed in the name of religion and colonial conquest. By looking at our people's history, we are reminded that those who practice our indigenous religions are not evil witches. They are people who protect our ancient traditions and preserve the wisdom of our ancestors. Many of us today may not share the same beliefs, but honestly, the least we can do is respect them. Because in each modern Babaylan or anyone who practices the indigenous beliefs of our ancestors, those who dedicate their lives to protect our people, in every one of them lives the spirit of resistance, the fire of our people's unwavering resilience to a world that is constantly changing. An enduring 
enduring spirit of serving our people no matter what. And regardless of your religion, there is still so much that we can learn from the wisdom of our ancestors, from the wisdom of our fearless babaylans. And that is it for me today, so let us know what you think about today's topic in the comments down below. And if you like this video or learned a thing or two, don't forget to like, share this video, comment down below, and please, please subscribe. But of course, before we go, today's shoutout goes to Ate Diva Malaya, Samay Dison, at Ching Maribel Malyari Bustos, Ate Ligaya Caballes, aka the Pinay Writer. And shout out to the Center for Babaylan Studies, especially to the Fierce Sisters, Kabampangan Sisters, Dr. Lenny Mendoza Strobel, and Dr. Lily Mendoza. Dakalpong salamat king Ega Nagana yung gagawan, Luid Kopu. And of course, special thanks and special shout out to my Patreon on Patreon. Ay, wait. Patreon and Patreon, Elise Punsalan. Dakala dakala salamat. You know, this video, this channel will not be possible without the love and the support of all my patrons, subscribers, and supporters throughout these years. Kaya naman maraming maraming salamat po. Agiyamanak, magsukul tuod kay mo. Shukran abenal. Terima kasi, daghang salamat. Maraming salamat. Ay, nasabi ko na yun. <laughs> Dakalpong salamat kay Kongan. See you next time. Mo in Tagalog kita kits and in Kabampangan. Miki Tix and in Binisaya, kita ay ta.